And good morning. Thank you for joining us. I am Tamara Scott. You're tuning in to Truth For Our Time. We are powered by Webcast One Live. If you want to join us, have friends join us, webcastonelive.com. You can join in the conversation at any point during the show, 855-244-0077. 855-244-0077. The reason we started doing this show wasn't that um, we just needed to have airtime or any other reason. It was then we wanted to get information to you. And there's so much happening right now across the nation. We're talking about the Common Core. We've dedicated a lot of shows to the Common Core. Today we're going to focus not so much on the content of the Common Core itself. We're going to focus on the people who are opposing Common Core and what's happening to them simply for raising a concern, asking or trying to ask a question, or all out saying they oppose it. And I want to thank those of you across this nation who are standing up, who are saying no, who are saying not my child. Thank you for that. And hopefully this show won't just let you know um, of those who are being mistreated, but it will give you the encouragement to stand strong in your battle. When you hear other stories across the nation and how people are not letting um, intimidation stop them from the truth. I hope you'll stand strong as well. Joining me first off today is Ann Gosel. Ann is with two different groups, Missourians, uh, see Missouri Education Watchdog and also Missouri Coalition Against Common Core. And I'm grateful for their work. There are so many good people in this cause. Donna Garner out of Texas. Donna has been uh, getting information out. I don't know what her whole network is, but I I want to encourage you because just by forwarding an email, you might put information in someone's hands that can help them. And Donna has helped me connect with a couple of our guests on the show that will be coming today and and other shows we've done. Before we hop into that, you see behind me this wonderful photo. We all recognize it as our founding fathers. What we don't recognize and what children in your school systems and your colleges um, no longer understand and have, in fact, been taught uh, a very hostile opposition to what we see in this photo and other photos. When our founding fathers met, when this nation was being formed, when the fight was raging over the independence of this nation, our leaders, George Washington, Patrick Henry, Adams, others, continually talked about their faith. They prayed, and we have books of faith. Bill Federer has written books of President's prayers, proclamations, calling for days of fasting, repentance, or what they call humiliation, and prayer. Concerned Women for America, each year on the third Thursday in November, Concerned Women for America of Iowa, asks the nation to join us in a day of fasting, repentance, and prayer. And this year, we've tied into the 150th anniversary of Gettysburg and the 97th proclamation from Abraham Lincoln. If you read that proclamation, it is worded in a way that you would think it was written by a contemporary today if we still understood the power of prayer and allowed our presidential officials such a privilege as to call on the Father the supreme being mentioned in our documents for his hand. And so the Thursday before Thanksgiving, one week before we feast, can we fast? Before we enter the busy season of Christmas and shopping and greediness, could we be grateful? After the elections are over, can we stop with the partisan prayers and ask for prayers for healing for our nation? Prayers of repentance, not for just those we think who have done wrong, but Maybe what we've done wrong, something we might need to fix. Asking the Lord to bring it to our attention and help us soften our hearts where they need softened. Strengthen our resolve where it needs resol- where it needs strengthened. Again, in the history of this nation, our founding fathers have given thanks for the providence and the hand of the Almighty. Imagine what might happen if we did it here. We're talking to our elected officials and asking them to sign a proclamation affirming a Lincoln's Proclamation 97. If you have connections with your elected officials, I ask you to do the same. 
If you're not a person of faith, you need not be offended. You just need not participate that day. But allow us, the heritage of our nation and what made this nation great, to continue on today. Now I'm going to move forward to Don, to um, Anne Gazel, and I want to thank Anne for joining me today. Anne, can you hear me? Are you on the line? I can hear you, Tamara. It's great to be with you. Thank you so much for the work that you do, and I don't know how you came about starting these organizations, MissouriEducationWatchdog.com. That and, actually is the blog, and that was started by Gretchen Logue in yeah. about um, six, six months, nine months into that. Uh, she and I met. Uh, as we say, there's no such thing as coincidence. Um, we met on a training uh, session that was provided in our state capital for people who might want to be citizen lobbyists. And at the time, neither she nor I really had any intention of being citizen lobbyists, but we both ended up going. We met there, found out we shared a passion for education, and so we're now co-editors on that blog. Well, I think that's amazing <clears throat> that your your state house would even offer such a thing. In fact, one of our guests later in the show is, is Anne excuse me, Alice Linehan out of Texas, who is now getting ethics charges from her State Board of Education because she is a citizen lobbyist, because she's volunteering her time, no pay. They are coming down on her. So I think it's amazing that your uh, state house is even inviting citizens to come in. What a great idea. We the people. (laughs) You have a voice. Well, and actually, I have to admit, it was being done by the homeschooling well, there you go. in our state. <laughs> <laughs> Truth is out. Very good. Well, and so all the more reason. What a, what a great organization. Um, and the other, the other website. The, the other one is the moagainstcommoncore.com. That is our coalition, and that is a group of individuals and organizations all around our state who share the common concern about education. So Concerned Women of America is part of that. Americans for Prosperity is part of that. Um, and then a number of individuals. Okay. Now, you and I were talking, and I'm so thankful. Thank you for responding to my inquiry. I had been hearing stories of people who were getting just grief from asking their teachers a question or um, trying to find out more information about what was happening to their children, their children. And uh, you had a story on Facebook, and for our viewers and our listeners, you can go to almost any Facebook, any state, and there will be a Facebook page about stopping Common Core for that state. If there's not, you need to start one, but I think most of them, even the states who supposedly didn't accept Common Core, have states fighting it because um, Common Core is eking into to school districts individually and independently, even when the states have said no to it. So the one that caught my eye was the parents who got scolded by the teacher. Can you tell our listeners about that? Um, Yeah, there was actually a teacher who tried to send a cease and desist order to parents telling them that they could not talk about Common Core um, to other parents and they could not get on social media and discuss Common Core or share the lesson plans. The now, audacity is amazing. You know, it's bad enough when we saw the, the article out of Colorado when teachers were telling parents they had to do homework. They were demanding parents fill out a survey as to what their political affiliation was and their views were. And I thought, gosh, what, where does the school think they have that right? But this teacher is telling parents what they can do on Facebook, which just cracks me up. Yeah, apparently they didn't get to that First Amendment there they're in the Bill of Rights. You know? <laughs> well, and we've seen, we've seen the um, assignments that are Common Core aligned. And this is a difficulty because we're told Common Core doesn't have a curriculum and yet we know that there's a, a, a curriculum that's aligned with the test and the standards for Common Core. But we've seen the concerns that the Bill of Rights, like you're mentioning, is reworded in such a way that we won't have the liberties that we know today. Yeah, Common Core really becomes this, this black hole, this all-encompassing thing that is sucking in every bit of education. It absolutely is affecting the other subject areas besides just English and math. And that's what parents are primarily reacting to. They're seeing their their kids' assignments and saying, hey, wait a minute, this is not right. And right now they're seeing the assignments. We're thankful for that. But there may be a day when they're all on computer, if this keeps progressing as we're told it will, and it will be more difficult for parents to actually see those assignments and know what's happening in the child's classroom. But, you know, Tamara, one of the good things is, is there are already laws out there that protect a parent's right to see that kind of information. The Pupil Protection Rights Act is out there, and it says a parent has a right, this is a federal act, um, a parent has a right to see every bit of material used in the curriculum. And it won't be acceptable for the schools to say, well, that's online, you can't get to it. 
Well, good. And it is, but it's going to take some, some tenacity on the part of the parents. It's no longer as easy. I, I, frankly, and it became easier for me to homeschool my kids than to deprogram them every day they got home off the bus. So, um, go ahead. Yes, and, and it is a fight for parents, and you do have to be strong, and you do have to go in and, and start showing the documentation that shows your rights and demand them from the school district. Let's go back to what we're dealing with as far as parents facing um, intimidation, harassment, threats uh, from school officials, just ill behavior. And we're seeing it here in Iowa from members of our uh, governor's office in the Board of Education, frankly. Um, We we just had the New Generation Science Standards, and while they say it was a public meeting, there was no public input whatsoever ever other than a survey online. And those who made the decision didn't get more than 24 hours to review the survey. There was no contradicting or con- countering opinion or uh, uh, experts able to speak on it. It was a done deal before they ever entered the meeting. And those who are speaking on it are now c- concerned about how they're being tra- treated and labeled. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later in the show with the dad who um, simply had a question on an assignment and was labeled a neo-Nazi. Todd Starnes has that article on, and uh, Renee Null uh, brought it to our our attention through uh, the examiner. And I bring these up not to stir stir dissension and not to be an alarmist or sensationalist, but again, I want parents to understand, don't let them intimidate you out of doing what is right. Don't let the tactics of destroying the messenger just to keep the message quiet because they don't like the message work. You have to remain active and vigilant. And hopefully you'll hear these other stories of parents who are not backing down and be encouraged. And you had another story you brought to my attention of parents who were not allowed into the school building for their conference without an escort. Yes, and and I thought it was an isolated incident. And since I spoke to you, I've now heard from two other parents in completely different districts where they had this same um tactic applied. It was the night for parent-teacher conferences, and so they had already expressed their concerns previous to the conference about Common Core, and when they got there, the principal met them at the door, escorted them to their teacher's classroom, sat in on the parent-teacher conference. In one of these instances, the principal actually answered almost all of the questions instead of the teacher, and when the conference was over, the parent was escorted back out of the building so that they could not talk to other parents, they could not talk to other teachers. Okay, I... I don't get this on a couple of situations, a, a couple of friends. First off, the schools, are they no longer public? Well, <laughs> they're public, but you have no say. You're, the only public in them is the tax money. But you, as a public citizen, you cannot walk into a school building. Shouldn't a public citizen, is there ever a time when the schools are open to the public anymore? No, it's very difficult. It used to be much more common. You could go into your child's classroom and sit there and observe, or you could help out and, you know, help with the reading and the math and that sort of thing. Um, Now it must be scheduled, and they have to approve you, and they use excuses like they don't want you disrupting the classroom uh, discussions or uh, progress, um, or it's for safety and security reasons, which are all just a front to just keep the parents out of the classroom. Absolutely, and if they know when you're coming, we all know you can have a classroom staged, We've seen it in other countries that live under a different regime or a different, uh, less uh, um, climate of liberty. So you can have the classroom staged when a parent walks in. Uh, I, I can't imagine what parents are thinking when you can't just freely walk into your child's classroom. When you understand what this puts you, what, what realm this puts you in as far as your child is concerned, you have to have permission. You're no longer under their authority. You're the, under the authority of the guards at the school, of the teachers at the school. Um, to me, that's... You, simply for being a parent, are considered a security threat. There. That was... Thank you. That was what I was trying to say. <laughs> that, that in your child's eyes, you and other parents are now a danger. These are the, these are the messages we're sending to our kids with, with maybe not the intention, but that's very certainly what's coming to your kids. The other issue is, how is this any different from a penitentiary? You, you're, a, you're an assigned visitor, you're given a number when you walk in, you sign in, you go only where you're told to go, and you have to sign back out. They know you're coming. I'm telling, I, I, I'm seeing that, and I've said it before, when we have our kids in public school, what we're training them to be is good inmates, whether it's an asylum, a penitentiary, 
or a hospital, we're, we're teaching them how to be good inmates, to stand in line, to take their number, to take their instructions, and then leave the gated area. You know, there's a lot of things not to like about Common Core, but and, and, and certainly this particular, these situations, but one of the things I think it has done, it has unmasked public education. There's other parents out there like myself who had problems with the school long before Common Core came up, and when you started to go up against the school, we saw these tactics, but they were just a more limited basis. Um, where you were marginalized and you were made to feel like you were the only parent that ever had a problem with this particular teacher or that your yes. child was exceptionally, you know, was a bully when you thought like, gee, that really doesn't make sense. Now we have the majority of parents seeing um, the assignments coming home and seeing things, strange messages from teachers. I had, my kid came home with a contract that they were supposed to sign at the beginning of the year that said, if you do not participate in class, I consider you a parasite. And I brought this to the principal's attention, and he said, oh, an unfortunate choice of words. And I said, no, that would be something she said in class. This is a contract she wrote up, typed up, made 150 copies of, and explained to the children. I don't think that's an unfortunate choice of words. But so it's, in a way it's good because it's unmasking the problem right. that has begun to occur in the public schools within the last decade. Right, and I want to clarify, what we're talking about is not necessarily part of Common Core. You're right, these things were happening in the 90s in my little rural school district in Iowa. So so these things are not necessarily Common Core, but they are coming more. Common Core seems to be firming them up, cementing these practices against parents. And Absolutely. So, so it is being exposed. So you got other stories uh, coming into your website, and the website... Uh, is Mo Against Common Core, M-O, the abbreviation for Missouri, Mo Against Common Core, and the blog site is Missouri Education Watchdog. Is Missouri abbreviated in that website? No, it's all spelled out. Missouri Education Watchdog. Um, other stories that have come to your attention? Um, we have had um, parents who were um, called by the superintendents and told, you are a very foolish woman, you don't know what you're getting into. Um, we have had teachers tell parents they just don't understand. We've had school board members who tried to comment on the curriculum told that they were not qualified. And what's really sad about that particular instance was that school board member who was chastised was, in fact, a, a U.S. Air Force uh, flight instructor. He's very qualified in teaching, and he very much knows, and it was American history, um, curriculum that he wanted to comment on. So the, the, it's unbelievable what has been happening. And so what, you, what you're bringing up there is unqualified, and this is a concern I have as well, and I think we're going to see it more with Common Core, is who's allowed to participate in the discussion and who's not. And I'm sorry, but an education degree, a, a degree of paper, an education is different from a degree, and wisdom is different from um, um, a degree as well. And so uh, the thing I think we should remember always is that you're the parent, you're the authority, and you have every bit um, um, a, a obligation, I guess, more than just a right and a privilege, an obligation, a responsibility to be involved. So when you got involved with the Common Core, what were your concerns on it that really lit your fire? Well, I think the first thing I, I ever saw on Common Core was presented by Betty Peters, who is on the Alabama State School Board. And it was just a graphic showing the Bill Gates, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and all of the money that they were funneling to all of these different groups to, uh, to work on and promote this thing called Common Core. And this was almost three years ago when I saw this chart. And I said, boy, that sounds really strange. And, and haven't we heard so, so much about Bill Gates and his money even just a few weeks ago, being spread around more to continue to promote Common Core. You would think that something that was so inherently wonderful wouldn't need a whole bunch of money to support it. <laughs> That's a great idea. Or or we wouldn't be so concerned about local input if if it was such a great idea. Parents parents know what's, what's good for their kids. I've often said, <clears throat> we don't need these tests and these standardized tests to know which teachers are good. Parents know what their kids are learning. You can tell why, how your kid's behaving, questions are answering, their vocabulary. You know what students are doing well. We don't need these tests as a way to measure our teachers. Small school districts, big school districts, doesn't matter. You can, you can tell what teachers are having an effect and an impact in a healthy way on their kids. 
And the really sad thing is the Gates Foundation has funded a number of education efforts, and most of them have failed. His, his most famous one is the small class. Uh, small schools effort where he tried to make sure that they had these really small schools and that was going to be the wonderful answer to education. And he spent $2 billion and he failed. And so we're still listening to this man give us education advice. Now we need to, we need to take a break here. We're going to take this break shortly, but before we go, uh, one of the other things that came to mind to me when I called you Anne, and I thank you for you and Gretchen Logan, your work that you do in Missouri was an article out of actually New Jersey, and it's Chris Christie in the in the photo. He's got his finger in the face of a teacher very angrily, simply because she's asking him about Common Core, I believe, or about the teachers. And his point to her was, just do your job, rather than listening. This this is kind of this bullying attitude that we're seeing. And I understand he's a Republican, and I understand sometimes photos can be taken out of context, but but I think they even have an audio of this one. Why are governors so intent on promoting the Common Core? Well, unfortunately, for the reason they all got into it, money. The, the state fiscal stabilization funds were the things that really kicked this off, and the governors had to agree that they would adopt a set of common academic standards in order for their state to qualify for billions in state fiscal stabilization money. All right, we're going to go to this break. We'll be right back. I am Tamara Scott. We're here with you on Truth For Our Time. We're powered by webcast1live.com, and uh, we'll be back with more uh, examples of parents who are just being parents and getting blamed because they're being good parents. We'll be right back after these messages. Yes, now your favorite programs on Webcast One Live can all be watched and listened to on any Android or Apple device. Your phone? tablet or ipad yes your favorite shows on webcast one live are available live or on podcast wherever you go let me introduce to you some of our great shows shalom every week on understanding the world with rabbi david kaufman we'll talk about issues in the middle east issues related to the Jewish tradition and religious traditions in general, and keep you up to date on exactly what's going on around the world. You may know some of the story, but you haven't heard all of the story until you've heard it on Understanding the World with Rabbi David Kaufman and our special guests we have on every week. Hi, I'm Doc. You listen to me every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. on Doc and Lefty radio podcast program where we discuss all the relevant topics of the day, including state, local, and national politics. My partner in crime, Lefty, often likes to have a little bit of conservative justice served upon him. So please turn in for the fireworks every week from 6 to 7 p.m. on Tuesdays at webcast1live.com. Thank you. So when you want to watch your favorite Webcast One program, remember, there's an app for that. You know, there's an app for that. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Get away from us, you mean old credit card. We don't have any more money. We're in trouble now. Save us! Help! Somebody save us! Somebody help! Help! Save us! <laughs> Hi, I'm Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of Des Moines. If your credit card's a little too animated, give us a call. Hooray, we're safe! Credit, you're our hero! And thanks for joining us. Ryan, I just sent you a link for one of our later guests coming up. It is the ethics charge that she got just simply because she brought to light uh, information concerning uh, Texas financial situations with the school there and and I think I don't know if it was a later audit because of what she did or or during the time what she was questioning so uh, I'll send that to you for later on in the show joining me right now uh, we have Ann Gassel on the phone Ann am I saying your name right is it is the G a soft it's, or a hard G it, it's Gassel yes thank you 
very much. Thank you for being with us. And joining us is another Anne, which is going to make it great fun, I'm sure, <laughs> a little confusing. Anne Miller is joining us. Anne is out of Maryland. Mar- uh, Anne, thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Tamara. Good morning. And even more, thank you for being in a meeting about Common Core and being organized enough to have your tape recorder ready. Were you tape recording this whole meeting? I was. I I write on examiner.com, so I figured I would try to cover it and see if I could pick out things to write about. So are you a a parent, a mom who just happens to write and examiners picked it up, or are you a reporter who is going to a meeting? I'm a mom, first and foremost, and an engaged citizen, and I and I happen to write on uh, examiner.com about the things that, you know, concern me as a citizen. Okay, and bring us where we were. Maryland, it was a school board meeting? Um, it was actually a Common Core forum mm. put on by our state board of ed, and they did four of them around the, the, the entire state of Maryland uh, after the beginning of the school year. So it was after implementation, they decided they better start informing parents about Common Core. Okay. We have the video queued. We're going to play it. Those who are watching on our website will be able to see it. Those of you who are listening, you'll just hear parts of it. We've got it queued up, I think, to the point of action, and we'll try and explain it through. All right, Ryan, do you want to play that video? Let me do this. Let me do this. And I, I have trouble in all of this. I grew up there. Not the best schools. Not, they still think they're not the best schools. But I think I love them all. Sir, I will say this. Out of all fairness, I everyone to, who I went submitted to questions. Community college. Oh. I finished at the University of Maryland. And now I moved my family out to, uh, to Howard County because of the reputation of the schools. Okay, so in all fairness to other parents who submitted questions, I do want to be fair, sir. Community college, and you know, it's a re- you know, so sir. my question is, how are we? Uh, you talk about college, but you're not talking about which college. You're not preparing, preparing them for World Harvard. Okay, my question is, how is lowering America's educational standards to prepare kids for community college? Because that's what it's all about. Because you mentioned before, that you know, the emphasis is we're not having to stop your quote before. Okay. Hey, listen, listen, parents, take control. We're sitting. This is not a CNN political debate. Let's go. This, hey, Let him ask his question. This is what I will say. In oh, fairness to everyone who asked questions, we do have some that are dovetailing to that. Let him ask his so, question. So the next question. So this, this is a dovetail. Don't stand for this. Try, you're sitting here like cattle. You have questions. You confront them. They don't want to do it in public. Okay. The next. The next Right there. All right, Ryan, thank you very much. I I know that might have been difficult for some of you who, who couldn't see it, but I, I wanted you to hear one, just the chaos that erupted in what should have just been a question. And the very end there, you could hear the guard throw him into the door. You could audibly hear him hit the door. At 154, if you're watching, the guard spins him around, yanks him off balance. And what happened coming up to this moment? Really, it was just uh, nothing happened. It was sort of a PR uh, (laughs) event on, you know, pro Common Core. We were instructed to submit any questions we had in writing, which we did, and then they proceeded to screen them and literally reword our questions. So they were asking softball questions. We didn't feel like, you know, there was a growing frustration in the room. And when uh, Mr. Small stood up, he kind of represented that. 
and just interrupted the meeting and said, look, I've got a question, You're, you know. And, and uh, at that point, I feel like they tried to make an example out of him. Well, they certainly That certainly is how it appeared when that hit the social media pages of Facebook. Many people were putting the Delphi technique in with that, which was something I didn't know what it was. And yet after I went and studied what Delphi technique was, I realized I'd been a victim of that myself back in the 90s. So as Ann Gosel has said, or Gazel, excuse me, this Common Core is bringing to light so many of the practices, the intimidation practices that the public schools have been using for some time. And when I brought up earlier the NGSS meeting here in Des Moines, I thought, why am I wading into this right now? But it was nothing more than a PR scandal. It was it was not, it, no input. They simply want public approval. They don't want public input. And you're saying exactly what we're seeing uh, here you saw in Maryland. So when yeah, you, absolutely. It was the appearance of public input is what they're after. And the questions were written down ahead of time, screened. Mm -hmm. Was that your voice? Let him ask his question. Yes. And then the woman who stood up in the video, was she challenging the guard? Yes, she was. And she was the only one that I noticed that stood up like that. Which was my comment to my husband. I heard a female voice, now we know it was your voice, let him ask his question, and I saw the female stand up and shake, challenge the guard. Where were the men? Well, in their defense, I'll say the room was kind of stacked with women. <laughs> so okay. There were a lot more women than men, and, um, and there were a lot of teachers and administrators there. So I would say maybe, a, I'm going to guess a third of the room was teachers and administrators who were pro Common Core, um, and uh, and so then there there was the other you know two thirds that maybe you could hear their exclamations, you know. But but really, we didn't think he was going to be arrested. We thought he was being removed from the room. I was shocked the next day to find out he was actually arrested, charged with second degree assault of a police officer, and it carried a uh, you know up to a ten year prison sentence. So they were really trying to make an example out of him. Have they dropped those charges? They did. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, uh, myself and one of the other activists who were, was in the room at the time, we ended up on the Glenn Beck show because of the video going viral. And it was around the time that that show was airing that they dropped the charges. Thank heavens for Glenn Beck. And, yeah, and, and a video camera. <laughs> exactly, and I thank you for having that video camera there and being ready. I might have mine, but by the time I got it <laughs> ready mm -hmm. to go and and, and 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 working, I would be too late. So thank you for being on guard and and, and at the ready. Um, so they dropped the charges, but as you're saying, only when it went viral and you were on yeah. Glenn Beck and pressure was applied. Otherwise, yeah. this man's life could have been destroyed. It could have been. Because financially, for him to fight it, to come up with a defense, for him to deal with his job and being arrested, missed work, uh, depending on the job that he has, what he may or may not be able to have on his record as far as an arrest, uh, this is this is serious. And we're seeing this happen more and more. Parents are being intimidated into silence. And teachers as well. They're, they're really afraid of teachers starting to speak up. I know of one teacher who went to the school board meeting here in Baltimore County, um, but spoke as a parent and didn't, you know, mention anything about being a teacher, gave her personal information when she signed up to speak, and they contacted her back at her school email address. Now, she hadn't supplied that, and you know why they did that. They wanted her to know that they knew she was a teacher. It's an, an intimidation tactic. So she loses her right as a parent, or she has to quit her job as a teacher. Or at least there's the threat of that, and that's all they need is the threat. Well, Ann, what, Ann Miller, what is your takeaway of this, and what is your word to parents, citizens, taxpayers who are watching? Well, I think that what happened with the incident in Baltimore County, you know, a lot of parents sat around because we're not used to these kind of tactics. We don't necessarily recognize them right off the bat. And so you kind of sit around not knowing what to do. It's time we start recognizing that our school system is very political and that they are using these tactics and we have to be prepared and know in advance how we're going to react to things like this and be ready. 
we do have more teachers speaking out. You brought up that the teacher had spoken out. There are more and more teachers who are writing concerns about it. Um, I, I'm not sure I'm going to remember the website, the blog, the chalk face or something. A teacher has an article on there, I love you and I believe in you to her students. And she can no longer continue teaching because she can no longer continue to watch what common core techniques are doing to her children. She's seeing them pull their hair out. She's seeing them cut themselves. She's seeing them beginning to have absences from school where they were good students before. She's seeing their frustration, their tears when they're being tested over materials they've not been taught. Um, we need more parents. We need more teachers mm -hmm. to stand up and to continue to fight this battle. And I think we need to recognize that it's not just a Common Core battle. Common Core was just the thing that woke parents up. And we're actually seeing that it's just one of a long line of offenses <clears throat> against uh, local control of schools, against parental rights. Uh, we need to really wake up and see that it's not just Common Core. It is the loss of local control being sold out because of these federal education grants that come with these strings. Common Core was just a requirement to apply to the Race to the Top education grant. So it's a and way of the federal government to kind of skirt law and the Constitution so that they can gain control. And the irony is that the school districts are so desperate for the money, and most of the money is going just to provide um, services for the federal accountability measures. So they're getting money from the feds to give them the reports that the feds want. It's really kind of what we see in a casino. You give a little bit of money for the hope of more money back. The federal government's giving just a little bit of money, but they're going to get a lot more money back. Because we're told that uh, Henry Burke, who's done state-specific analysis, cost analysis for the states, he says it's going to cost non-common core states millions less. They will save millions not being involved in this. But by the time uh, school districts pay for the testing, uh, the implementation, here in Iowa, Henry Burke says 184 to 192 million just for the implementation, not the updating. That doesn't include the technology updates. This is going to cost a phenomenal amount of money. So that little teaser money we get from the federal government will just be priming the pump of what we're going to be paying back. And in addition to that, we're, um, our school boards, our local school boards and our state boards are becoming reliant on these federal grants. So once you're in it, it's like you get stuck. How do you get out of it there? How do you then go around? You've just spent millions implementing Common Core. Now you got to turn around and spend millions to decor and reject the, you know, millions. But Maryland got a quarter of a billion dollars out of the race to the top grant when they implemented Common Core. And that's a lot of money, and they, they're reliant now. So going forward, it's just going to get more and more radical as there's more and more requirements for these federal grants that we now can't get out of. And so Maryland got, you say, a quarter of a million? Of a billion. billion. A quarter B. of a billion with a B. Yeah. And so certainly they shouldn't need any more money. They should be actually offering tax cuts to their residents with that kind of money coming through. How are they doing financially? Well, this is Maryland. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it goes in, but it never comes back. <laughs> and I'd be really curious as well, what states did get money? Are they, are, how do they lean in the political spectrum? Are they at need financially? Is, was this just another redistribution of wealth tactic? Well, I, because almost all of the states signed on, uh, you can't look at it and say this is partisan or, you know, politically motivated. In the, I mean, political as far as your leanings, left or right or Republican or Democrat. Uh, this is really money driven. It, it's all about the money. And But not very many states that. got money back in the race to the top. How, how many uh, of those states I'd like to know, is it just one more way to redistribute wealth. And I've not studied that. Um, and I know we don't want to get into that this show. I want to keep moving on the people who have been uh, mistreated. And we're going to talk. I was hoping he would call in Josh Berry. Have you both heard the story of Josh Berry? Todd Starnes wrote about it in Fox. But first, Renee Nall brought it to our attention on The Examiner. And I don't know if you know her, Ann Miller. She writes for The Examiner as well. Uh, the dad who simply raised a question about the assignment. And in the process was 
labeled a neo-Nazi. Ryan, do you want to do that before we go to break, or would you like to, we have time before we go to break? Okay, we have got a little clip right here of a voicemail that a teacher left on a mutual friend's vo uh, phone. You're going to hear him being labeled, and this is the smear tactics, and I don't think she was really even intending to do this. I don't think they even realized that they've been swept up in this movement. But go ahead and play that if you will. We're having some problems with a parent in our school district, and on his page, you are one of his friends. Now, he is a photographer who did uh, Mike and Tracy do Tracy's daughter, um, Lauren, uh, cats, like two weeks ago or something. I said, well, maybe that's how, because I know, you know, Mike's your cousin and stuff, so maybe that's why you're friends with him. But I would like to know, um, because some of it seems like he's a neo-Nazi, uh, I just figured we had 12 mutual friends, 11 of them are Jewish, so maybe he is Jewish, I don't know. Anyway, call me back or text me and let me know about Josh, I think that's his name, Josh Barry, B-A-R-R-Y. All right, honey, thanks, bye. If you're still watching, uh, it says I am Jewish. Josh is Jewish. His wife, he says, is half black. He says, good luck with the Nazi thing. And that's from Josh on, on Facebook. The gentleman that got that voicemail responded back and said he's the farthest thing from a Nazi. And I really don't think that this teacher was intentionally trying to smear someone. But I think they've been swept into what happens when we label the messenger because we don't like their message or their stance. Either and, do either of you have a comment on this? Well, this, the sad thing is that she starts it out saying we're having a problem with a parent, and it was a parent who asked a question on an assignment. That's Now that's a problem parent. The great, great observation, and this is what we're seeing. When And it's not just Common Core. This has been the school's techniques for quite some time. I don't know if they have meetings and discuss these. This is a great way to silence. Ann Gazzle brought it up in the first part of our session, and I've, I've seen this happen when they say to parents, you're the only one who feels that way. You're the only call we've gotten today trying to isolate parents out and quiet them. Teachers and administrators are trained in how to handle opposition from parents. Um, now, I don't think that the way this teacher handled it would have been part of any kind of training like that, but, but they are trained in how to diffuse parents' concerns. All right, we're going to take a break here. When we, be back, when we come back, Alice Linehan is going to join, join us, and she's been... Um, on this Common Core battle and now facing repercussions with charges, uh, ethics charges, uh, being an activist, actually being a lobbyist, being charged with being a lobbyist when she doesn't get any pay for what she's doing. She's a parent fighting this cause on her own dime. Um, we'll be talking to her shortly. You see this corner, this uh, sign behind me, Stop Common Core. If you're on Facebook, you're likely seeing some of these. This is a campaign that was started, I don't know actually who started it, Leslie uh, Beck is the one who started it in Iowa. You see her Facebook page there. Um, we at, They are asking everyone on Facebook who wants to stop Common Core to make this your profile picture. And it's quite amazing on various pages when you see just rows of stop Common Core profile pictures at the top. But this is an easy way to do it. Uh, shouldn't have any repercussions back unless you have the teacher that Donna and Gazel told us about early on who scolds parents for talking about Common Core online. Even so, you need to do this. You need to take a stance whether somebody likes it or not. You need to do the right thing. We're going to take a break. We're going to be right back here. I am Tamara Scott. You're listening to Truth For Our Time, uh, powered by webcast1live.com. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner and general manager of Service Legends. Oh, I brought uh, along a couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I'm Administrative Manager. I'm the Senior Technician. From Service Legends. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. You just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture, 
um, that we're going to do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do. And if we guarantee it's going to be a good experience for you or else it's free, what type of work do you think we're going to do? <laughs> there is a guarantee. Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee, all of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we'd fail and we can't make it right, we guarantee all of those guarantees with a 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you going to say that to a client? No. <laughs> you don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house. We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're going to be listening. They're going to want to know what your challenges are. Then they're going to come and give you options, and, and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family, you know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it, because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now, and then leave, and then come back, charge you again, and, and the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I want to find why it failed today. How can we change the part today with something that you're not going to have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me. But is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did is perfect. It's great. <laughs> Keep going, though. I like this. <laughs> just give us a try. I'm going to take all the risk. I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do. I mean, fixed writer, it's free or 100% money back. Enough said. Thank you very much for joining me. I am Tamara Scott. This is Truth For Our Time, and we are giving you truth for your time when the headlines hit home. And um, we're helping you live God's word in today's world. And I know some of you may not have a faith, and that's okay, but please don't be offended by mine. And uh, Anne Gazel is my guest today. Anne is from Missourians, the Missouri Coalition Against Common Core. You can find that at Mo Against Common Core or Missouri Education Watchdog. Dot com and Anne has been with us through the show. Ann Miller popped in that last segment. Anne is the brave mom who also writes for Examiner and just happened to have her camera on because she's ready and she understands this type of meeting that we need to be ready like this. Uh, and I would suggest the rest of us do as well. Um, you can reach Ann Miller. You can find her articles by just doing a search. Ann Miller Examiner Baltimore. Ann Miller Baltimore. You'll You'll find her probably, and her work on Examiner. And uh, when I was saying goodbye to her during the break, she said, would you just remind people to go to their state Facebook pages just to do a search for their state and a stop Common Core? And I'm telling you, if you will, you'll be surprised what will pop up. And if you do not find one, then maybe you're the one who's supposed to start that stop Common Core Facebook page. Easy thing to do and a great way to bring people together. A lot of people still just don't know what Common Core is. And as we've been talking today, you recognize some of the behaviors it brings out, some of the worst practices we've seen in the government schools. But um, it's not, if I could be so clear, it's not a Republican-Democrat issue. It's not a liberal, right-wing, left-wing issue. This is a parental issue. This is a educational issue. And this is you doing the very best for the upcoming generation. And honestly, Common Core simply is not it. Uh, one of the easiest ways I heard it explained was it's rather a culmination of every bad reform we've had. And you just have to remember that in education reform, it's probably the most talked about policy. Education always comes up in elections and political speeches, and everyone's for education, and no one ever wants to be the one to say no to an education program. There's a lot of money involved in it. A lot of corporations stand to make money from this. And it's hard for politicians to come out and say the truth or speak against it, or they may just not know it. So I would invite you to talk to them, make sure that they learn it, hear it from you. And we've seen Senator Grassley be a leader on this here in Iowa. We've seen the Republican Central uh, National Committee write a resolution 
denouncing it. We've seen several governors, including the Iowa governor, now do a proclamation moving away from Common Core. We still have to be careful to make sure that that looks different than when the Iowa Core is implemented, how it's different from the Common Core and the data collection. Ann Gazel, do you have um, anything that you can add along that line that comes? I know you, you deal with this so much, you probably have a lot to add here. <laughs> Well, you know, you, you talked about the Iowa Corps in Missouri. We call them the Missouri Learning Standards. And I am sure that they will, if those become labeled the boogeyman, they will try and change the name again. What the proponents need to understand is that what the parents are, are reacting to is not the name. What the parents are reacting to is what they see in the school. So it doesn't matter how many times they rename it, the parents will always recognize it for Common Core, especially the parents with children in the very youngest grades where m- much of the stress is occurring. In the youngest grades, and and that stress, as we talked about, pulling out the hair, these the I don't know that the cutting is the younger grades, but we in New York we saw the stories of nosebleeds, anxiety, behavior issues, all kinds of negative behaviors playing out. Yeah, and we're we're seeing that here in um, Missouri as well. And you talked about the teachers. You know, the teachers are are in a bind on this, and many of them do not support Common Core, and they're experiencing the bullying and the and intimidation techniques from the inside. And next week, for those of you listening, next week we want to talk about the, um, the, the assignments. If you have assignments, if, you, if, you've, if you've dealt with issues of assignments, we want to come back to that. I keep having parents send me, call me, uh, send me information about things that they, they just can't believe that they're seeing in their children's classwork. So if you have information on those, I want you to send them to me, to me at Stop Common Core Iowa, Stop Common Core Iowa, Truth For Our Time. You can send them to me that way, way as well, Truth For Our Time or Stop Common Core Iowa. Both are gmail.com addresses. Joining us online today, Anne, is uh, a lady by the name of Alice Linehan. Alice is an inter- intrepid activist. That's what her bio says. An intrepid af- activist, politically active Texas mom who worked hard in the trenches of the grassroots movement. Uh, she's launched Voices in Power in 2011 in response to identifying an urgent need to engage in the pa- um, passive majority of voters at both national and state levels during the primary process. And then she's also engaged with Women on the Wall. And I came into contact with Alice through Donna Garner and her good work that she's doing to alert people to Common Core. Alice, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Now, as we were talking, you are facing repercussions as well. And we believe it's because of your stance on the Common Core. Give our listeners the brief uh, background. Yes. Um, Basically, last Thursday, I got a call from the Texas Ethics Commission that said um, that Thomas Ratliff, who is on the State Board of Education, he's an elected official, and he happens to also be a paid lobbyist for Microsoft, had filed an ethics complaint against me, basically alleging that because of my activist um, activities, Um, I should be registered as a paid lobbyist. Um, (laughs) My question is, uh, I'm not being paid. Uh, I took on this battle. I've been involved in the grassroots as an activist um, ever since Obama was elected, um, but had not really been engaged in this battle um, against Common Core in Texas. It's called C-SCOPE. until uh, a mother whose uh, mother had been tutoring students and uncovered C-Scope um, kept asking me to push out information. And when I started diving into the issue and actually realized that it was in my children's own school district, um, I became very much um, involved in using, you know, the same tactics and strategies that uh, activists all across this, this country are using to get the information and the word out. Um, earlier, you were talking about the different groups. If you just Google, you know, your state and Common Core, these stop Common Core groups um, pop up, and there are moms and dads um, becoming activists, if you will, over this issue, and and that's actually what what has occurred. And and I guess. 
it's a badge of honor that our activities are are um, being seen as effective because we're actually um, making people uh, be held accountable for the roles that they play. And what's interesting, I I believe what prompted this, um, just like there's so many groups across the country who are organizing on Facebook um, and into these Stop Common Core groups, we've, we have a working group here in Texas that um, was doing some work researching. Donna Garner's a part of that. Um, Ginger Russell, Janice Van Cleve, all kinds of great people are, are working. And um, we put together this team that was asking people at the local level to um, put in public information requests for the amount of money that was being spent on C-Scope, this um, curriculum management system that's the same as Common Core. Um, the financial, how much these districts were paying for this. We also did public information requests for how much districts were paying for uh, to be members of these associations, Texas Association of School Administrators, Texas Association of School Board. All that financial information was sent to a Tea Party leader in Frisco, Texas, a dad, who took all that information, extrapolated the financial data out, and wrote two white papers, one on C-Scope, and the next one on um, TASA and TASB, and put together how much money, the, the hundreds of millions of dollars that are being spent on these non-governmental organizations that have direct access to our tax dollars. Um, Women on the Wall hosted a uh, education summit in Conroe, Texas, and this financial information was given to Senator Dan Patrick, um, who's a, a sitting a state senator, and uh, the Lieutenant Governor David Dewhurst. When they left that uh, summit, they called the, the state auditor. And the state auditor um, put in a request for a charter to do a full audit of C-SCOPE. So... <laughs> When we have a Wednesday night conference call um, every Wednesday night, and we have these communication teams that call in to this conference call. And last Wednesday, we had uh, the gentleman that had written those white papers uh, spoke up, and he gave a report and talked about the amount of money that was um, involved in these organizations, and then the next morning, I got the call from the Texas Ethics Commission wow. that I <laughs> that I had a complaint filed against. Me. I think that's so, the most efficient I've seen government work. <laughs> exactly, exactly, and and you know, I I have to give um, kudos to the lieutenant governor, um, you know, and and Dan Patrick for actually um, taking the step to, to get the state auditor, auditor involved. And that was because of the pressure and the work of moms and dads across the state who were willing, by the way, to do that work for not one penny. It was because that we are defending our children and, we have, and protecting them. We have just a couple minutes left. So what is the status? Are you going to be okay? Or are you going to have to come up with money to defend yourself on this ethics complaint? Well, we are, we're in a holding pattern right now. Um, I did talk to an attorney um, because before I went public with this, I wanted to make sure that um, it was okay to go public with it. And, and actually, he recommended it because I think what Thomas Ratliff's strategy was is to just put it out there, oh, don't listen to Alice Linehan. She's got an ethics charge against her. Well, I wanted to get it out there because I really want people to look at Thomas Ratliff's history because he is on the State Board of Education as an elected official and a paid lobbyist for Microsoft. And those of us, you know, who understand the uh, Microsoft's involvement in Common Core, um, that sends up red flags. So um, 
we're in a holding pattern. I may, um, if the Ethics Commission decides that this complaint is valid, um, then I will, you know, be needing to employ an attorney. And, you know, we'll, we'll just go for it. I And we will have to raise money for you. Right, exactly. My response to Thomas Ratliff is bring it on. I mean, I would love that opportunity to show the difference between um, a paid lobbyist and an activist. And and we are running out of time, but you have the Impeach Ratcliffe website. And that was that before or after this complaint? That that was before um, okay. Voices in Power. We did um, put up a impeachratliff.com. Um, and I encourage everyone to go there and, uh, of course, sign this petition, but even just go there to read about it, to right. see um, about him. My guest today, Ann Gazel, G-A-S-S-E-L, with Missouri Coalition Against Common Core, with Missouri Education Watchdog, Alice Linehan, with Voices Empower and Women on the Wall. I appreciate both of them joining me. I hope you, ladies, you hope you both come back because I think we have more shows with both of you on a variety of topics. One more thing to our listeners. David Barton is going to be in town here in Des Moines, Iowa, the 23rd of of November. You can get a ticket, thefamilyleader.com, thefamilyleader.com. He'll have his wonderful educational historical teaching during the dinner hour, and I think that's at 5.30. But at 4 o'clock, as a bonus, free of charge, nothing extra, with your ticket to the dinner, with your ticket to the dinner, you may come at four o'clock for teaching on Common Core, a whole session on Common Core from David Barton. Uh, you can find more information about that, thefamilyleader.com. I would highly recommend it if you're anywhere in the area. Ladies, thank you for joining me today. We are out of town, out of time. <laughs> I am Tamara <laughs> Scott. Be encouraged, but never be complacent.